information contained in this podcast is an expression of opinion and does not constitute investment advice. This is the Gold Money Podcast with Dominic Frisby, keeping you up to date with expert opinion on precious metals and the markets. Hello and welcome to the Gold Money Foundation podcast hosted in association with Frisbee's Bulls and Bears with me, Dominic Frisbee. So I'm sitting in uh, the garden of a well-known restaurant in West London called The Troubadour and sitting opposite me is uh, my good friend, the trader Michael Hampton, also known as Dr. Bub. Mike is based in Hong Kong, but he's over in London just visiting. And uh, may I say firstly, Mike, what a pleasure it is to have you back on the show. How are you doing? I'm very well. It's good to be back and enjoying uh, the last gasp of, uh, well, I was going to say summer, but let's say a nice, pleasant fall. It, it is. It's a kind of, it's a, it, there's an autumnal chill in the air, but it's still very pleasant. Um, Mike, uh, what have you made of London since you've come back? What, what, what have you, been your impressions? Is it, is it more busy than Hong Kong? Is it less busy than Hong Kong? What, are you, what do you make uh, of the economy? It's more similar to Hong Kong than, than I remember it being. I mean, both... Um, both London and Hong Kong are enjoying some pretty terrific property booms at the moment, uh, driven probably mainly by low interest rates. But I, I was really surprised by how gentrified London's been uh, in, in various areas. And I did visit a lot of different parts of London on this trip. But places like Ealing and um, Camden and um, the, the Docklands area, that I hadn't seen for years, I managed to visit this time, and they all look like they gentrified quite a bit. So, despite all the talk of austerity and recession and so forth, London looks to be doing pretty well right now. Are you surprised by that? Well, uh, I'm not if I look at property prices, but uh, I've also been reading um, stories of economic doom and gloom in Europe, and some of that carries over to the UK, so uh, I really haven't seen much sign of that at all. Very good. Okay. Now, um, I suppose I want to ask you really about what your take on the markets are at the moment. Um, it, we're talking, uh, it's, it's mid-October. Um, if you look at this year, gold's pretty much played out according to the seasonal patterns. Stock has, stocks have to a lesser extent. Um, why, don't we start, why don't we start with gold itself? And um, what, what do you make of gold at the moment? Is this just, just a kind of normal October correction before we head off higher? Well, we're less than a month away from the U.S. elections, and I think that's going to have a big impact on uh, both gold and the stock market. And um, I'd like to bring the four-year collection cycle into, into the thinking as well as the seasonal cycle. If we start with the seasonal cycle, then um, this is normally the time, uh, October, when we're seeing a correction in the gold market. It often peaks the first week in October right around my birthday, which is the 7th of October every year. And we've seen that every play year. out almost, <laughs> not, not every year, sorry. My birthday comes every year, but not no, the seasonal was, peak in gold. Yeah. But um, and this, I've been skipping the last few birthdays anyway, but never mind. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so we saw more or less that. We saw a peak in gold around the first week of October. We're seeing a correction now. It's been pretty uh, small dip, a very shallow dip so far. Um, my view is that that dip will last um, as little as three weeks or so, which would bring us probably a low this week if we have that, and um, maybe as long as three months. So um, ideally, it would be um, somewhere in the middle of that, uh, around Christmas time maybe, uh, in, in, in the average year. This year, it might come a bit earlier because I think gold's actually per per behaving so well, pretty well. So right now, I'm watching to see how much volume gold has on the downside. And I'm watching even more closely gold stocks, GDX. Yeah. And I'm looking for a possible low this week in GDX, around 50. And if we break through that, then maybe 48. Uh, and if we break the 48, then I'm, I don't really have a clear target, but it could be uh, another few dollars below that. So I think maybe GDX will give us a clue as to when we're going to see the, the bottom on gold. But ideally, uh, for the bulls, it would come this week. Okay. And just kind of reading some of the stuff that you've posted on your website over the last couple of months um, would I be right in saying you think we're in a pretty big move for gold uh, you think it gold made a pretty big low I, I can't remember when it was I think it was in June and you know we're at the start of a kind of uh, one of gold's kind of multi-month moves up yeah um, I mean if we were talking about it in, in Elliott wave terms we've had the wave one and the wave one correction and now yeah the next move up um starting whenever it's going to start and you know maybe we'll see a little rally now and then another drop into december 
at, to a higher or lower level than we see uh, in October. Um, but after that low is out of the way, um, after that low is out of the way, we might see a pretty big gain. And um, I'd like to now talk about the four-year cycle. But yeah. in terms of Elliott waves, uh, we've seen the one wave, wave one up. We're, we're now seeing maybe wave two down, and that often comes ABC. So we've probably seen the A of that. Maybe we're about to see the bottom of the A. Then we could see a rally, uh, a B rally, and then another C down, and then we see a big rally up. Okay. Uh, or that, that that sometimes that that second wave is, is very uh, very small, very shallow. So that that's that would be the most bullish case that the A the, the dip is finished this next week, and then we get the beginnings of a good rally. That next rally could be a pretty good one. I think we saw about 15 points up in the GDX. Yeah. So another 15 points up from 50 would take it to 65. Um, that would be a minimum expectation is if this is a good wave three ahead of us as part of a, a good Elliott wave up. Um, another way to look at it, and I'd like to come into the four-year cycle. Okay, it's good, good to hear you bullish about gold, by the way. It's, it's, uh, you've been a cynical in the past when others have been bullish, and it's good to hear you bullish. Well, no, I, I, I've... I think I've usually called gold pretty well. I, I tend to be a pretty good buyer. I'd sell a little bit too soon, but yeah. I, I want to be long gold. I'm quite long gold at the moment in call options and so forth at the moment. Uh, I have hedged them a little bit, and I'm now deciding what to do with my hedges over this next few weeks, week mm -hmm. or a few weeks. But anyway, the next move up, big move up on gold, if, it, if it's a longer-lasting one, on the four-year cycle, could be very exciting indeed. Um, I was mentioning to you earlier, there's a guy called Rod McEwen, who I was lucky enough to meet a few months ago, and he looks at the four-year cycle on gold, and he says the average four-year cycle in the year after the election, let's say from election time this year, uh, from, from, from around about now, November, uh, over the next 12 months, is a double. So if we make a, a low in GDX at, say, 50, yeah. then we could see G GDX over the next year hitting 100. Well, that would be all-time highs, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, I don't remember the all-time high, but it might be. Um, I'd have to look at those charts. But, um, yeah, I think it would probably bring it up to a new... Do you go, know what the WHOI is now? Where the who is well, I have to look at those charts. Yeah, okay. I think it, when we do this... Um, uh, when we put uh, we'll put a chart up as well so people can look at that but uh, it would be a pretty powerful rally from what we've seen and I want to be long some gold shares especially yeah. producing gold shares. So let, let's have a think I'm just going back I mean in 2008 was the last general election go gold put in a very clear low in late 2008 and had a very it had a brilliant end of 2008 and then 2000 and yeah I think by the end of 2009 it had certainly more than doubled yeah 2005 I'm just... 2005 is a pretty good year for gold, I think. I can't remember. And 2001 was definitely a good year for gold. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there would seem to be some validity in that. I, I haven't back-tested that theory, but the year after a pres an election, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty well, positive. Yes, and, and I, Rob, Rob McEwen's figures go back quite a few years. I think it, you know, he was probably looking at the, uh, from memory, at the XAU. Yeah. And that database goes back a long, long way. I think yeah. it goes back to the 1970s. So uh, his four-year cycle would have been based on all that data. Dimitri Speck, if you're listening, let's see a seasonal chart for gold shares in, in, in post-election years. Let's have one of those on your site. But, of course, anything can happen. And uh, although my view is bullish on gold, it's, it's less bullish on stocks. And um, I'm being pulled in two different directions here. Yeah. Because I still think that, um, um, that there is potential for a lower stock market. Uh, we're in QE3 now, or QE whatever number we're, we're in. We're in the QE period. Um, and that's obviously helped the market. Um, but it seems like every time we see a new QE, it's less powerful than the one before. And this one at the moment seems to be fading. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I am a bit worried about stocks. I mean, the sort of trade I like at the moment, because option prices are pretty cheap, uh, from the time of the gold stock low, which could be next week or a bit later, is to be long call options on gold stocks or call options on gold and to also own some puts on, on the S&P 500 or other uh, stock indices. Yeah. I think buying it with these volatilities that we're seeing now, that would be a pretty good trade. Maybe, just maybe, we might finally get the time, the, the long-vaunted time when gold and gold stocks finally decouple 
from uh, all other assets and they rise when everything else trades sideways or falls. Yeah, I think that would fit my view very well right now. But we've been waiting a long time for that. We have seen it. We saw it in 2000, uh, last year was it, for a a couple of months. Yeah. We saw a big move up in gold. Basically, money was shifting out of the stock market into the gold market uh, for a couple of months uh, last year. So Sure. Hopefully. I thought good, good, last year was pretty rotten all around for gold. Maybe, was it late 2010, are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking of the time when gold, basically, when gold shot up. Was it 2010? When... Yeah, it was, it, it, was, it, was, it was, we saw a high in gold last August, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was a pretty powerful move up. But the gold stocks never really confirmed and, and, that. And, and, yeah, and the gold stocks never confirmed that. But at, at, so gold was moving up at yeah. the time the S&P was oh, moving okay, down. Okay, fine, yeah. That's really what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, uh, fine. That was a kind clear. of post, uh, that was when the, one of many, but one of the first Greek panics set one in, One of my it? favorite charts, which I'll put up uh, and link to this podcast, is what I call Bernanke's racetrack. Yeah. Because Bernanke's been pushing money into the system, and, and of course, he wants maybe stocks to go up, and they, they do go up, but gold tends to go up more. So my, the racetrack is the idea of we start at the same price, GLD versus SPY in this chart. They yeah. start at the same price, and then you can see what's moved up faster. And what's happened is GLD has moved up faster, and when it dips and comes close to the uh, GLD price, it's usually a pretty good time to buy uh, to buy gold and, and, I see. And, and get it. And so that, to me, looks like we're, we're now into another period where GLD is moving up faster than stocks. All right, Mike. Well, um, it's been great talking to you, and we're going to record another podcast uh, talking about a less a trading viewpoint and more a philosophical viewpoint. But uh, as we close this one, why don't you give out your website and let people know if they want to find out more about your work? Sure. They can come and see the website and also see the charts. I've mentioned the two charts, uh, globaledgeinvestors.com. Globaledgeinvestors.com. It's a chat board and it's a great chat board and there's all sorts of uh, interesting things going on there. So take a look. In the meantime, Michael Hampton, thank you very much. Thanks, Dom. Subscribe to the Gold Money newsletter at www.goldmoney.com to receive email updates on new articles, videos, and iTunes podcasts from our Gold Research section.